So now that we've laid the groundwork for what we're dealing with when we look at a neuron, the idea of membrane potential governing either inhibitory or excitatory actions, let's take a look at a very specific excitatory action called an action potential. This next flowchart will be entitled Action Potentials 1. And here we're going to set up the scene for the processes associated with this mechanism of the nervous system, or with this specific function that the nervous system has. Remember, our goal with the nervous system is to detect stimulus, integrate that stimulus, understand what it is, and then respond to that stimulus. Part of that response, that effector response that has to happen, is really going to involve many of these action potentials working correctly, coherently, and in cohesion together with one another. Let's take a look at what constitutes an action potential and how it happens in the next two flowcharts on action potentials. So first and foremost, let's understand what we've sort of previously established. We need to know and remember that membrane potential is going to shift significantly. It has to change. Remember graded potentials? Membrane potential shifts significantly, and if that happens, if that prerequisite is there, that change in membrane potential, you're going to have what is known as a massive change in voltage. And we're talking huge changes right now for a very big event, so a massive change, that's a key word in the nervous system, massive change in voltage. And by voltage we mean millivolts, right? What is the massive change that we're referring to? We're referring to the idea that depolarization, which is an excitatory state of a neuron, okay? When a neuron is depolarizing, it's getting less negative. That means depolarization causes membrane potential it causes that to reach that threshold, and we have to remember the number for the threshold, to reach the negative 55 millivolt threshold. Now, why is this referred to as depolarization? Well, that's because we start at a resting potential state. That's going to shift significantly and change its voltage and depolarize, go away from that negative state of negative 70 and go towards a more a less negative state of negative 55 millivolts and reach threshold. This is going to be shown in figure 48.10c. Take a look at that. It shows a nice visualization of what this process is, of an action potential within a neuron. So this is the scene that we have. How does this happen? How can we get to negative 55? How do we possibly create the eventual uh, super idea, the big sort of repolarization that we see? That's going to be seen and sort of governed by a process um, or system of structures called voltage-gated ion channels. We really need to understand this to understand how an action potential works. So we'll do this over here. They're called voltage gated. These are different than the regular old ion channels we mentioned before because they work differently. Voltage gated ion channels. Take a look at figure 48.9 while we're going over the function and structure of these things that are going to be involved in action potentials. All right, what are voltage gated ion channels? Well, simply speaking, these are membrane proteins so they're not just going to be uh, pores in the membrane. They are definitely proteins in this situation. And they're proteins, and they're thus going to function in a very specific manner. That manner will be to control the passage of specific, key word here is specific ions. How will that happen? How is this passage going to be controlled? Because there are going to be specific, keyword again, gates, specific gates for those, here's that keyword one more time, specific ions. So there will be a specific gate for a sodium ion, let's say, and a specific gate for a potassium ion, let's say. Those are the two most prominent of the nervous system, at least for this course in understanding action potentials. So how does this could passage happen? How does this movement through the gate happen? Well, it's based off of whether or not the membrane protein is in either an open or closed configuration. 
And these membrane proteins open or close based on, based on changes in voltage. Look at the name of these structures one more time. If the voltage changes to a certain extent, the gate associated with that voltage change to the ion will either open or close. Controls the passage of specific ions via specific gates, opening and closing based off of changes in voltage. A perfect term for something that does that would be voltage-gated ion channels. Channels that only open and close if a certain voltage is met. Okay? Now, overall, we can state the following about what we just said. Therefore, voltage-gated ion channels are regulated by changes in voltage. So they will only work if there are changes in voltage. And how do they work if there are these changes? Well, they control the shape of the protein. Open or close, remember how we just said that? Control shape of this protein. So what can happen is the following. Two possible shapes can be uh, assumed by these voltage-gated ion channels. These proteins can either be in a closed configuration, so it closes in one shape, let's say, we well, won't be any more specific than that for right now, or it opens in another shape. So it has a specific conf configuration, opens uh, in another shape, I should say, so put in on top of here, another shape. So it has a specific conformation that allows things in, and a specific conformation that does not allow things in, or out, I should say, and therefore we're basically seeing these as voltage gated. These are voltage gated, thus the term and name, voltage gated ion channels. They're going to close based off of a voltage and they'll open based off of a voltage. What is it always in refer reference to? Changes in a certain voltage. Okay, hopefully that's being driven home here. And again, how is this going to cause any movement of anything? Here it's not going to be simple diffusion like we saw in those ion channels that were leaky, like the potassium ion channels, nor will it be active transport like we saw in that uneven exchange of three sodium ions and two potassium ions. Here it's a different form of transport called facilitated diffusion. Facilitated because it utilizes the help of a protein, right? And it's diffusion still, thus that means these ions sodium and potassium, which we'll see, will still follow a concentration gradient, but they will utilize a protein to help it. They follow the concentration gradient, and they utilize no ATP, no ATP, and this is, of course, via a protein. Which protein? A membrane protein called a voltage-gated ion channel. Take a look at figure 48.9 to summarize everything we just said here. So the, basically, the purpose of understanding this is the following. Only way you can have a significant shift in membrane potential, a massive change in voltage, a depolarization to occur, is to utilize the structure and function of voltage-gated ion channels. These are involved in action potentials. The other things that we saw, the, uh, the sodium-potassium pump and the ion channel, just general ion channel, are involved in maintaining resting potential. That's a totally different thing than doing an action potential. Therefore, these are presented with action potential. So keep that distinction very clear. So now, let me put this into context for you so that we have an understanding of what an action potential is. And we'll look at, broadly speaking, the chain of events associated with an action potential very quickly. So what we have to notice initially, and we know this, of course, is that neurons are always going to be, unless excited, at resting potential. They are in a non-excited state, so there's no excitement. There's no stimulus, nothing telling the neuron to do anything. It's just living its normal resting state, normal resting potential. But what can happen is the following. You could have, and in this normal, in this non-excited state, I should rather say, um, the following will be in regards to the voltage-gated ion channels. What's noticed is that all of them, VG stands for voltage-gated, all the voltage-gated sodium ion channels and the voltage-gated potassium ion channels, 
both of these, these are the ones that are going to allow for an action potential to occur. Both of these ion channels that are voltage gated are closed. They are closed. Okay, remember, they're closed in one shape and open in another based off of a voltage. So now, if the voltage is negative 70 millivolts, what can you say about the voltage gated ion channels? They are closed. They are not allowing ion movement. So there's no ion movement if the neuron is at a resting state. Now, let's turn this absolutely around now. Let's make the neuron excited. How can we do that? What we need to do is the number one thing that the nervous system does is detect a stimulus. That's the first thing. Stimulus detected. Cool. Next, what's going to happen? The next event will be that the voltage-gated sodium, this is the correct order right here, the voltage-gated sodium channels, they will open. The reason they're opening is because some sort of stimulus has caused them to open. Okay, We'll talk about specifically the voltage that results in this, uh, but just for right now, trust me that this happens. Once this happens, the voltage-gated channels open, they're going to allow something to rush in, rush into the cell rush into the cell, and that would be sodium, because that's the type of voltage-gated channel they are. Voltage-gated sodium channels open, thus sodium, which is a positive ion. Please keep that in mind. That's going to have an effect on the state of the cell, the polarity of the cell. Sodium positive ions rushes into the axon. Think what's going to happen now. The membrane, will it depolarize or hyperpolarize? Because these are positive ions coming in, the membrane will become less negative, thus the membrane depolarizes, okay? Membrane depolarizes. It becomes less negative because you're getting an influx of sodium ions into the axon, okay? So the axon's membrane in relation to the outside is going to become less negative. As it becomes less negative, we can state that it gets closer to that magic number, to that magic threshold of negative 55 millivolts. That is our threshold. If we get to that state, we will have an action potential no matter what. So getting closer to that means that you're becoming more uh, or less negative, more positive. Negative 55 millivolts is more positive than negative 70 resting potential millivolts. And that's the sort of sequence of events that we see. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the following. What we need to understand also is that the magnitude of change, this idea of change that happens, this whole sort of sequence in potential, magnitude of change in potential, whether we're going from a hyperpolar, a resting potential state to a depolarized state, that change that just happens, it depends on the stimulus strength. Okay? Depends on stimulus strength. You may not have a strong enough stimulus to cause the membrane potential to reach the threshold of negative 55 millivolts. Maybe it only reaches negative 60 and only maybe it goes from negative 70 to negative 69. Tiny little stimulus causes that. That magnitude of change directly causes or is dependent on how strong the stimulus is. For example, if you have a very small stimulus, a very tiny sort of influence, what you're going to notice is that very few channels open. If very few channels open, very few positive ions will rush in. If very few positive, uh, positive ions rush in, then you will never ever reach negative 55 millivolts. You won't reach the threshold, negative 55 millivolts. And if you don't reach negative 55 millivolts, you won't have an action potential. But what if you have, let's say, the opposite, a super strong stimulus that's going to have a very, very influence, influential message on this neuron. What you're going to see is that many channels open there's going to be a huge amount of these sodium, uh, these voltage-gated sodium channels open. They're going to allow tons and tons of sodium in, and then you will definitely reach negative 55 millivolts. And what happens after that is something that we'll focus on in the next video.